An entire cinematic business model is built around filmmakers dreaming up creatively disgusting death scenes, and over the last year or so, these are the ones that have left the biggest impact. I'm Josh from What Culture Horror, and these are the 10 best death scenes in recent horror movies. Number 10, the wine bottle shoved down the throat, freaky. Christopher Landon's body swap slasher comedy is packed to the gills with memorably ridiculous death scenes, serving as a nod to the creatively disgusting murder set pieces in the Friday the 13th movies. Yet, Freaky also gets its very best kill out of the way in its opening sequence, where the Blissfield Butcher, played by none other than Vince Vaughn, hunts down a gang of teenagers before cornering one of them, Isaac, in a wine cellar. The Butcher then grabs a wine bottle and shoves it down the poor kid's throat, causing a vile bulge to protrude from his neck. As Isaac chokes on the bottle, the butcher finishes the job by smacking Isaac's jaw shut, setting the bottle's glass splintering through his throat in a bloody mess. Number 9. Dismembered by a pair of jeans, Slacks. Slacks is distinguished as the only horror movie in history centered around a pair of possessed jeans which murder the employees of a clothing store in a host of creative ways. Picking just one death isn't easy then, though the highlight surely has to be the prolonged demise of poor Lord, who upon inspecting the murderous pair of jeans gets mauled by them. The jeans, approximating the physicality of a rabid dog, leap on Lord and bite off both his hands, spraying blood everywhere before jumping on his neck and severing his head from his body. Because that's not insane enough, we then see the jeans lapping up the giant pool of blood left by Lord's remains, and in a possible homage to David Fincher's Seven, his boss then stumbles upon his dismembered remains packed neatly into a box. Number 8. The Glass Grinder Trap a Spiral from the Book of Saw Spiral from the Book of Saw may have been a mostly disappointing attempt to revitalise the dormant horror franchise, but it did at least deliver one memorably wince-inducing death scene. While most of the movie's traps were a little on the tame side, the climactic glass grinder trap felt like a welcome callback to some of the series' most creatively grim concoctions. Near the end of the film, protagonist Zeke discovers corrupt cop and former partner Peter Dunleavy chained up in front of a glass crushing machine, which has been modified to hurl the glass shards at Peter's body. Cue a nauseatingly prolonged sequence in which Peter's torso is cut to shreds by the crushed glass, causing him to bleed to death while Zeke is basically helpless to save him, getting a few scrapes in the process. More than any other trap in the film, this harkened back to the series' lean, mean, torture porn origins. Number 7. Nicolas Cage curb stumps an animatronic gorilla into a urinal. Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland is undeniably one of the most ridiculous horror films of the year, and a deranged high point in Nicolas Cage's increasingly unhinged corpus of wacky genre films. Cage here stars as a silent, unnamed janitor who is tricked into cleaning up an abandoned amusement centre haunted by eight killer animatronic monsters. It's basically an unofficial adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's. The film is remembered largely for the animatronic mascots brutally murdering a group of teens who sneak into Willy's Wonderland, and also Cage wordlessly dis dismantling the mascots with all of his savage might. The easy highlight though occurs when the Janet takes a trip to the bathroom and faces off against Gus, a tie-wearing animatronic gorilla. The janitor manages to overpower Gus eventually, finishing the job by curb stomping his head into a urinal, splattering his black blood over both the janitor himself and the surrounding bathroom area. Number 6. Maud Burns Herself Alive, Saint Maud Saint Maud is one of the greatest horror films of the last few years, a mesmerising portrait of a young Roman Catholic woman, Maud, who becomes obsessed with trying to save the soul of the dying woman she's caring for, Amanda. At the end of the film, Maud murders Amanda, who she believes to be a demonic presence, and now imagines herself sporting angel wings. As she believes she's now proven herself to God by murdering the demonic entity, she walks onto the nearby beach, douses herself in acetone, and then strikes a match, believing this will allow her to transcend her human form and become a saintly angel. From Maud's perspective, she sees herself bathed in ethereal light as onlookers on the beach bow down to her. In the final shot of the movie, however, we cut back to the reality of the situation, where Maud is screaming in agony as she burns to death. Although we only see a brief flash of Maud's charred body continuing to burn, it's nothing short of pure nightmare fuel, in turn delivering one of the most unforgettable endings to any horror film in recent memory. Number 5. Adam's face gets clubbed to pieces, wrong turn. The recent Wrong Turn reboot may not have been a great movie, but it was certainly better than many expected, in large part thanks to its dedication to revolting, practically executed death scenes. The easy winner of the bunch though is the horrifying demise of Adam, who after killing the mountain settler known as Elk Skull, is put on trial by the community for his act. 
their leader, Venable, unsurprisingly finds Adam guilty and sentences him to death, which is carried out a few moments later in front of his friends, no less. As they helplessly look on, Venable uses a log to bludgeon Adam to death, as director Mike P. Nelson lingers on one impact shot where Adam's face completely breaks apart, much to his friends' disgust. Curiously though, Nelson originally intended not to cut away from Adam's death at all, and show the gradual destruction of his face, but after the MPAA slapped this cut of the movie with the dreaded NC-17 rating, he dialed it back a bit. Number 4. Contorted to Death, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It The third Conjuring movie didn't quite live up to the quality of its predecessors, but it still delivered enough supernatural thrills to be a worthwhile watch for fans of the series. One of its highlights occurs right at the end of the film as well, when the occultist Isla is brutally murdered by the very demon she herself summoned. Because she failed to complete the curse she raised the demon for, the demon turns on her and collects her soul instead, which she achieves by painfully contorting her body, snapping her fingers, limbs and finally her neck until she dies. It's far from the most gratuitous death you'll see in an R-rated horror movie this year, but thanks to bone-crunching sound editing and some stellar effects work, you still feel every moment of it. Number 3. Turned into a human speaker, Sound of Violence Cult slasher film Sound of Violence follows Alexis, a traumatized young woman who, after recovering her lost hearing, discovers she possesses synesthetic abilities. That means Alexis experiences aesthetic pleasure whenever she hears human suffering, and so embarks on a killing spree in an attempt to assemble her musical masterpiece. The film features a number of memorable death scenes, such as a delightful sequence where she explodes a man's head, but the highlight must surely be the creatively insane climax, where Alexis murders her best pal Marie. In the film's final scene, Alexis performs impromptu surgery on Marie, turning her into a human speaker by surgically grafting woofers onto her body. Alexis then uses Marie's body to broadcast her masterpiece, and the effects of the bass presumably cause massive hemorrhaging to Marie's internal organs as she quickly collapses to the floor and dies. Number 2. A Face Eaten by a Zombie Tiger – Army of the Dead Everyone loves watching the arsehole of a piece bite the big one, and for all of its flaws, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead certainly delivered an unforgettable death for one of its most loathsome characters. Martin, the most dubiously motivated member of the central heist, ends up getting his comeuppance in the third act when he's surprised and mauled by, yeah, a zombified tiger. This isn't a quick death by any means though. Snyder, of course, lingers on Martin, being thrown around by the ravenous tiger, which effortlessly concusses him as he tries to fight back. The tiger then gnaws away at Martin's face and torso before finally finishing the job by biting his face clean off, leaving a gore-soaked human skull behind. I don't know why I said human skull there, that wasn't in the script, it wouldn't be an animal skull would it? That would be such a twist if it was though. Anyway, again Snyder shies away from no grisly detail, confirming that there's absolutely no chance in hell of Martin coming back as a zombie in the recently confirmed sequel. Number 1. Death by Bread Slicer, Fear Street Part 1, 1994 and finally, the recently released Fear Street Part 1 1994 boasts one of the most creative and downright effed up deaths in any horror movie from the last few years, when poor Kate has her head shoved through a bread slicer by the skull mask wearing Shadyside Killer. Director Lee Janayek refreshingly refuses to cut away, staying with Kate as she's pushed head first into the slicer, causing huge chunks of her bloodied scalp to spurt out as she's fatally sliced into shreds. Between the impressive technical execution and the heartbreak of one of the series' most likeable characters being dispatched so suddenly, this is a death scene nobody's going to be forgetting anytime soon. Amusingly as well, Netflix even carried out their own investigation to see whether or not a bread slicer could indeed cut a human head apart, and well, you'll have to seek the answers to that out for yourself. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below, what did you think of these death scenes, and are there any good ones that you think deserve a place on this list? While you're down there as well, could you also please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.